सो ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम साहिल गौरव पी एम आर एफ टी ए फोर दिस कोर्स डी सी माइक्रो ग्रिड एंड कंट्रोल सिस्टम एंड आई वेलकम यू इन दिस लाइव टूटोरियल लाइव सेशन नंबर सेवन आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल इन द असाइनमेंट सेक्शन एंड दिज प्रॉब्लम वी आर सॉल्विंग इन दिस लाइव टूटोरियल सेशन विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर योर फाइनल एग्जाम एंड योर एग्जाम इज नियर वाई आई थिंक इट इज ऑन ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ सितम्बर सो प्रैक्टिस मोर एंड डू वेल इन द फाइनल एग्जाम सो लेट एस बिगिन द दिस सेशन वाई सॉल्विंग द सम क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द पावर सिस्टम स्टेबिलिटी पार्ट सो हेयर द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ए सिक्सटी हर्ज फोर पोल टर्बो जनरेटर रेटेड हंड्रेड एम बी ए थर्टीन पॉइंट एट के वी हैज इनर्सिया कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ टेल टेन मेगा जूल पर एम बी ए फाइंड द स्टोर्ड इनर्जी इन द रोटर एट सिंक्रोनस स्पीड सो इफ यू सी वाट वी हैव गिवेन हेयर we know that a stored energy in the rotor at synchronous speed in the form of kinetic energy is gh so where g is the rated power of machine rated power of machine and h is the inertia constant so we have given g is equal to the rated power of machine is 100 k 100 mva and we have given h inertia constant is a 10 mega joule per mva then we can write a stored energy as Hundred MBA into ten megajoule per MBA. Then we can get the answer easily as one thousand megajoule. So the answer of for this question is D, one thousand megajoule. Now let us see the second question. It is also based on. It is also from the section of uh, power system stability. so the second question is a 60 hertz four volt turbo generator rated 100 mva 13.8 kv has inertia constant of 10 mega joule per mva if the input to the generator is suddenly raised to 60 megawatt for an electrical load of 50 megawatt find rotor acceleration so i give you hint you should apply here swing equation so that you can get the so uh, answer for this I think someone wants to join. we know that swing equation in so we can write the swing equation as 
एसिलेटेड पावर इज इक्वल टू मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्सिया इन टू द रोटर एसिलेशन दैट इज डी स्क्वायर डेल्टा डी टी स्क्वायर सो फर्दर यू कैन राइट इट एज मैकेनिकल पावर माइनस इलेक्ट्रिकल पावर दैट इज एसिलेटिंग पावर एंड यू कैन राइट अ मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्सिया एज रेटेड पावर ऑफ अल्टरनेटर इंटू इनर्सिया कॉन्स्टेंट जी एच पाई एफ इंटू डी स्क्वायर डेल्टा इज यू कैन राइट इट एज अल्फा दैट इज रोटर एसिलेशन so if you see m is m is the moment of inertia if you write m as gh divided pi f then its unit will be मिली जूल सेकेंड पर इलेक्ट्रिकल रेडियन एंड इफ यू राइट इट एज जी एच एज इन द डिग्री फॉर्म देन इट्स यूनिट विल बी मिली जूल सेकेंड पर इलेक्ट्रिकल डिग्री so if you see in the solution then all the answers are in the form of electrical degree so we will use this second um, we can write m as gh is equal to 180 1 gh divided by 180 degree into f so we can write pm minus pe pm is mechanical power p is electrical power gh 180 degree have so we have pm given this that is a dernier rate to 60 megawatt and for an electrical load of 50 megawatt and g given as 10 मेगा जूल पर एम बी एंड एच सॉरी जी इज द रेटेड पावर ऑफ मशीन सो जी विल बी द हंड्रेड एम बी and h we have 10 mega joule per mba and 180 degree and the frequency of the alternator is 60 hertz so into alpha so if you simplify this then you will get 10 into 180 degree into 60 divided by 1000 electrical degree per second square get uh, it as 108 electrical degree per se second square so the correct answer will be a now let us see the second question third third question third problem which one is not the advantage of horizontal axis wind turbine 
ये ऑप्शन इज कैन बी स्टार्टेड इजली बी इज हाई रिफिशेंसी सी इज इजी टू कंट्रोल एंड डी ऑप्शन इज नीड अ स्ट्रॉन्ग टावर टू सपोर्ट द जनरेटर एंड द नेसिल आई हैव अटैच दिस फिगर फॉर योर रिफरेंस सो दैट यू कैन टेल दैट दिस वन फर्स्ट फिगर इज हॉर्जेंटल एक्सिस बिन टर्वाइन यू कैन बेटर इट इट राइट दिस इन शॉर्ट फॉर्म एच ए डब्ल्यू टी और जेंटल एक्सिस बिन टर्वाइन सो द फर्स्ट फिगर इज और जेंटल एक्सिस बिन टर्वाइन एंड दिस सेकेंड फिगर इज वर्टिकल एक्सिस बिन टर्वाइन सो यू कैन यू कैन टाइप योर आंसर इन द चैट बॉक्स If you see horizontal axis bin turbine, these rotate having this rotor, but blades rotate on this horizontal shaft. While on this vertical axis bin turbine, in this we have rotor blades which are rotating on this vertical shaft. And this horizontal axis bin turbine generally used for the higher power rating. this vertical axis bin bin turbine these are basically used for low lower power rating and uh, and the, uh, these are generally used at the means even uh, for lower power rating we can use in the like crowded place also but this horizontal bin axis bin turbine it requires a uh, open a space and because these are having rotor blades having like 70 70 50 75 meter long long blade so it need a space and these are little bit noisy as compared to the vertical axis bin turbine so uh, yeah but uh, these are having uh, these are having advantages like larger efficiency because it is rotating at a at a height of means at a at a at a at a height from this at a at an altitude why this vertical axis bin turbine need not that much height so this uh, uh, it may get distorted wind speed but this horizontal axis bin turbine it get a steady state wind speeds like means uh, from a height from uh, from the earth you will get not much deviation in the wind flow so if you write uh, the advantage of horizontal axis bin turbine What are the some of the major advantages? Advantages are, and these are being used from from very like this vertical axis wind turbine is now being used in recent topic, and it is having more research to do for extracting power at higher efficiency. But horizontal axis wind turbine already have been implemented at many places. and these are like well advanced technologies so the first advantage you can write it as it is having higher power output generally you can see it as 2 to 8 megawatt plant we can see like that and it is having high efficiency can transform for 42 50% of received power into electricity
we have already done question from the estimation of wind energy from the from the wind power plant power into electricity and high reliability because it is installed at a open space so already it's always been flows there because of no hindrance in the path of wind flow and it is having high operational wind speed to receive a speed with able to receive wind with greater speed and so these are the some of the major merits for this horizontal axis wind turbines but on the other hand if uh, we want to implement this horizontal being ax horizontal axis wind turbine we need main power because it uh, if you see the plates and the this tower shapes it requires a lot of transport installation cost and main power requirement is more as compared to vertical axis wind turbine because these are having larger in size as compared to this vertical axis wind turbine so you can write disadvantages as four horizontal axis wind turbine difficult to transport difficult to transport install and maintain because wind rotor blades are as long as 70 meter rotor blades are as long as 70 meter so even if you want to transport this type of uh, rotor blades you require a special type of trucks to transport this and installation cost requires larger cranes and all these uh, mechanical uh, I means how to install at the uh, get elevated at a certain height and just attach to this attached to this nasal part and for maintaining it's not easy because you need to go at a height from the earth so it so you while in this vertical axis wind turbine just this you can see this generator part is at the just below this uh, just at the ground level so easily they can the operator can easily if there is problem in that part then uh, uh, operator can easily eradicate that thing while in this horizontal axis wind turbine the th these things are very difficult to do that and also if you see the environmental impact these rotor bl blades are can cause problem to the these uh, birds and also if they are installed at offshore places then it also pr create problems for the aquatic uh, for the aquatic marine creatures Second point you can write create negative environmental impacts. Like flying words we have and if it is uh, offshore wind uh, power plant then it also causes 
problem to marine ecosystem and we have a strict regulation for installation strict regulations for installation so if this horizontal axis beam turbines can't be installed at a means crowded area like near a city or a near a uh, village it, it it is it should be some distance from that crowded place and while vertical axis beam turbine is just like we have solar rooftop plants it can be installed at crowded place it can be installed anywhere so this needs a strict regulation and it also causes a, a noise problem so it uh, must be taken care of that it does not cause m noise at that place if it creates more noise then there should be see that how why these are creating noise and this should be reduced so th and then again it should be installed properly so these are the main advantage and disadvantage and if you see from the option you can easily from the common sense you can easily find out the answer that can be started really this is one the advantage higher efficiency is also advantage easy to control is also advantage but it need a strong tower to support the generator nsl so this is the demerits for this out gentle exit interval so the correct answer will be d if you want to read more about this vertical axis wind turbine you can go through this other recent research topic that how to extract power more efficiently from wind ex uh, vertical axis wind turbine now let, let us see the next problem so the next problem is stability of system implies that a small change in the system input does not result in large change in system output a small change in the initial conditions does not result in large change in system output c option is a small change in system parameters does not result in large change in system output and d option is all of them are mentioned so what do you think you can type your uh, answer in the chat box if you see the definition of power system stability power system stability status that its ability to return to normal or a stable operation after having after having been subjected to some disturbances after having been subjected to some form of disturbances so what do you think what should be the correct answer for this uh, problem
चंदन वर्मा डी ओके दैट इज करेक्ट आंसर सो ऑल ऑफ द इफ यू सी फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन दैट फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट से दैट इफ हैविंग लार्ज चेंज इन सिस्टम इन सिस्टम आउटपुट मीन्स हैविंग अ स्मॉल चेंज सिस्टम इनपुट दैन डे नॉट रिलेटिंग लार्ज चेंज सिस्टम आउटपुट एंड बी ऑप्शन इज इनिशियल इफ यू चेंज इनिशियल कंडीशन ऑल्सो दैट यू डोंट सी अफेक्ट ऑन द सिस्टम आउटपुट एंड यू हैविंग चेंज इन दिस सिस्टम पैरामीटर्स देन यू हैविंग डोंट अफेक्ट इन दिस सिस्टम आउटपुट दैट नॉट मच अफेक्ट सो द करेक्ट आंसर विल बी डी If you having any doubt in between, you can ask. Don't hesitate to ask. Now let us see the next problem. Consider a three-phase, four eighty volt, three hundred kV load with power factor of zero point nine lagging. What is the active power of load? This type of question we have solved, so I can you can easily oh, Chandan Verma has already replied. See the correct answer right. This is very easy question. so what we have given we have given the apparent power of load is 3 phase you can write 300 kva and we have power factor given as cos phi 0.9 lagging so we can write the active power of load as P three phase is three phase into cos phi, so is three hundred into zero point nine, so two hundred seventy kilowatt. So the correct answer will be C. Now let us see the next problem. The possibility to seamlessly add or remove units within microgrid is first option is redundancy, second option is scalability, C option is flexibility, and D option is all of the above. So I have given some literature also here. So from reading, you can also estimate the correct answer. you can try your answer in this chat box so already i have given here b is the correct answer right chandan so if you see here means from the architecture point of view functionality that can be achieved through power architecture include the flowing parts redundancy redundancy means it, it has redundant power supply for the loads with minimized reliance on communication means it is not dependent on communication communication requires sensing parts and for establishing that we need communication port protocol so it increases the complexity of the system and also it increases the cost of the system so if it is much it is if it having reduced communication and even we are getting the we have to opt optimize between the uh, like a stable system and this cost while increasing the communication so we rec we have to balance both the things we are getting a stable system with the having less reliance on communication so redundancy tells that only means we are rendered power supply for the loads with minimized reliance on communication and flexibility that thing possibility of reconfiguring reconfiguring the system online during faults and or to form microgrid clusters means it gets by to a stable state that it is fault tolerant system is fault tolerant
and it has wider options for power flow and it can flow it can follow the optimal power flow path so that denotes the flexibility part and generally we have having hybrid ac dc micro grid so from there we can get the flexibility thing and scalability what does it not possibly to seamlessly add or remove units within micro grids means there we don't need to change the whole controller part we can easily plug and play the dg units within the micro grids that thing denotes a scalability so th this is the what is question is being asked so the correct answer will be the b now let us see the next problem a sand reactor at 100 mbar is operated by 98 percent of its rated voltage and at 96 percent of its rated frequency the reactor and the reactive power absorbed by the reactor is a option is 98 mvar b option is 104.02 mvar c option is 96.04 mvar d option is 100.04 mvar so i just give you hint and you can try it parallelly with me so q you can write it as reactive power absorbed by reactor that is voltage across the reactor v square divided by xl you can further write it as v square 2 pi fl so what we can write q1 as q1 in the rated mbr so you can write q1 as v1 square 2 pi f1 l and that is given as 100 mbr and we need to perform the reactive power absorbed by reactor at 98% of rated voltage and 96% of rated frequency so you can write q2 as b2 square 2 pi f2l so b2 you can write like 0.98 v1 and f2 you can write 0.96 f1 so dividing this you can denote as first and this you can denote as second so dividing first by second we get q1 divided by q2 sorry it's a better to divide it q2 way divide second by first so q2 divided by q1 so you can write it as b2 b1 square 2 pi l will cancelled out and here you can write it as f1 divided by f2 and you can write it as third so putting third using third you can get q2 as q1 into Zero point nine eight V one divided by V one. If you can write it as, and you can write F two as zero point nine six F one. So just put all these values. So Q one we have hundred M V A R. 
इंटू जीरो पॉइंट नाइन एट स्क्वायर वन डिवाइडेड बाई जीरो पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स सो यू कैन गेट द आंसर एज हंड्रेड पॉइंट जीरो पॉइंट फोर टू एम बी आर सो द करेक्ट आंसर विल बी डी एनी वन डिड करेक्टली और नॉट तृप्ति है गिवन द करेक्ट आंसर हंड्रेड पॉइंट जीरो फोर नाउ लेट अस सी सी द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम क्वेश्चन नंबर एट विच स्टेबिलिटी इन्वॉल्व द रिस्पॉन्स टू स्मॉल डिस्टर्बेंस दैट अकर ऑन सिस्टम प्रोड्यूसिंग ऑसिलेशन दिस प्रॉब्लम इज ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द पावर सिस्टम स्टेबिलिटी पार्ट सो फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज स्टडी स्टेट स्टेबिलिटी बी ऑप्शन इज ट्रांजेंट स्टेबिलिटी सी ऑप्शन इज डायनेमिक स्टेबिलिटी डी ऑप्शन इज ऑल ऑफ देवर यू कैन राइट यूर आंसर इन चैट बुक्स सो स्टडी स्टेट स्टेबिलिटी रिफेयर्स टू द एबिलिटी ऑफ सिंक्रोनस स्पीड टू ए टू रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ सिंक्रोनस स्पीड टू ए ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीजिंग लोड बेसिकली फ्रॉम दिस बी सी दैट वाट अप टू वाट एक्सटेंड वी कैन इंक्रीज द लोड ऑफ द सिंक्रोनस मशीन सो दिस डू नोटेड बाई दिस स्टेबिलिटी एंड ट्रांजेंट स्टेबिलिटी इफ वी गिव द लार्जर डिस्टर्बेंस टू द सिस्टम एंड वी सी द see see the largest in rotor speeds power angles and power transfer that denotes the transient stability and for the dynamic stability it refers to a smallest disturbance that a constant system have producing a step oscillations if it regains if oscillation is not if oscillation is bad means like it is reducing in nature it is not increasing further so so that is the stable that denotes the stable uh, it's a, a stable in nature if it is growing in nature means oscillations are growing like that so it is not bounded bonding so it is unstable unstable system so dynamic stability refers to the a small disturbances that account system producing oscillation and this transient stability generally fast in nature usually occur within a few seconds so you can write one or two points regarding this steady state stability it relates this points of a सिंक्रोनस मशीन टू ए ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीजिंग लोड अप टू हार्ट एक्सटेंट वी कैन इंक्रीज द लोड दैट डिटरमाइन दिस स्टडी स्टेट स्टेबिलिटी and this transient stability relates to the large disturbances large disturbance which may cause large in rotor speeds power angles and power transfers and dynamic stability that involves response to a small disturbance that account system producing oscillation so if like we have oscillation like this suppose sorry this is the axis and we are getting oscillation on disturbances like this so this denotes the stable system 
वायली ऑन डिस्टर्बेंसेज ऑन स्मॉल डिस्टर्बेंसेज वी गेट ऑसलेसन जस्ट अपोजिट इन नेचर मीन्स फ्रॉम इट्स एम्पलीट्यूड इज ऑल्सो इनक्रीज जस्ट टाइम स्केल सो इट्स दे नोट्स दैट इट बींग्स अनस्टेबल इन नेचर सो डायनेमिक स्टेबिलिटी इज नॉट इट इज नॉट डायनेमिक स्टेबल इफ इट फॉलो दिस ऑसलेसन पार्ट इट्स बेटर टू राइट नॉट डायनेमिकल नॉट It is you can write it as dynamically stable. It can time part its oscillation, so you can write dynamically stable, and it is not dynamically stable or dynamically unstable. So the correct answer is C. Did anyone give the correct answer for this question? Yeah, see the correct answer, Trupti. So the let us see the next problem. What quantity of charge must be delivered by battery with a potential difference of 200 volt to do 180 joule of work? I think this is the very basic question, and we have studied in our school days. so we know that here we need to find out this we have given voltage 220 volt and we have work given as 800 joule so we know that from uh, we need to find out q so q will be work divided by voltage from in unit you can get 100 joule divided by 800 joule divided by 200 volt 220 volt it is approximately equal to 4 coulomb so correct answer will be b Let us see the next problem. In an AC generator, frequency can be controlled through increasing or decreasing. So I have just written this statement. In AC generator, frequency can be controlled through increasing or decreasing mechanical input power. While on the other hand, voltage is controlled by injecting or ejecting reactive power. So the, the correct answer will be B. Now let us solve uh, one numerical type problem. Three phase sine PWM inverter operates from a DC link voltage of 650 volts for the modulation index of 1.0. The RMS magnitude of line voltage of fundamental frequency will be equal to. We have solved this type of problem in this last tutorial session also. So if you see that the fundamental uh, phase peak voltage, you can write in the terms of modulation index. And this DC voltage, M A into V D C divided by two. And here they have asked about this R M S magnitude of line voltage. So convert this phase value in the R M S line voltage. So first write in the peak value V L peak. You can write V L peak divided by root three, and that will gives V phase peak in M into V D C divided by two. So 
लाइन वोल्टेज यू कैन राइट पीक वैल्यू इजिकल टू आर एम एस इट इज द मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ रूट टू टाइम्स ऑफ आर एम एस वोल्टेज बी गेट इट हाइज लाइक दैट एम ए इंटू बी टी सी डिवाइड बाई टू सो वी आर हैविंग वी एल आर एम एस फाइनल वी एल आर एम एस रूट थ्री टाइम्स रूट थ्री डिवाइड बाई रूट टू इंटू एम ए बी टी सी डिवाइड बाई टू सो यू विल गेट रूट थ्री इंटू रूट टू मॉडलेशन इंडेक्स इज गिवेन एज यूनिटी एंड वी डी सी वी हैव सिक्स फिफ्टी वोल्ट डिवाइड बाई टू सो यू विल गेट द आंसर एज नाइन हंड्रेड एट्टी पॉइंट जीरो नाइन थ्री हंड्रेड थ्री हंड्रेड नाइन्टी एट पॉइंट जीरो फोर वोल्ट सो फाइनल आंसर विल बी थ्री हंड्रेड नाइन्टी एट वोल्ट नाउ लेट अस सी सम क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द सिंगल फेज फुल ब्रिज इन्वर्टर सो द क्वेश्चन इज ए सिंगल फेज फुल ब्रिज इन्वर्टर हैज आर एल सी लोड द डी सी इनपुट वोल्टेज इज टू हंड्रेड थर्टी वोल्ट एंड द आउटपुट फ्रिक्वेंसी इज फिफ्टी हर्ट फाइंड द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द लोड वोल्टेज अप टू फिफ्थ हारमोनिक सो हेयर यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट दिस फोर एनालिसिस फॉर द सिंगल फेज इन्वर्टर आउटपुट वोल्टेज लेट मी राइट दिस टर्म फोरियर फोरियर एनालिसिस फोरियर एनालिसिस ऑफ सिंगल फेज इन्वर्टर यू गेट द आउटपुट वोल्टेज लाइक दिस square wave for so the this is the basic wave form to find out the fourier transfer so vdc minus vdc expansion is it contains only odd harmonics part so n is equal to 135 to infinity 4 btc divided by pi sin n omega t and this is the fourier expansion of single phase inverter output voltage Here you can write v zero one peak as four v d c divided by pi so four into two thirty divided by pi so we will get two hundred ninety two point eight volt and V zero three peak. You can get V D C four V D C divided by three pi. So you are having two four. Just divided by three, so you will get 
97.615 volt and fifth harmonic part is B05 peak so 4 VDC divided by 5 pi so 292.8 divided by 5 so we will get approximately 58.57 volt so finally you, you, you get the expression for the load voltage up to fifth harmonic as v not t 292 sine 340 t and 97.62 sin 3 into 314 t plus 58.57 sin 5 into 340 t so this is the expression of this inverter output voltage up to fifth harmonic Now let us see the next problem. A single phase full bridge inverter circuit has load R is equal to 2 ohm and DC source VDC to 30 volt. Find the value of power delivered to load inverts only due to fundamental component of load current. So as we have already seen this Fourier analysis of single phase inverter output voltage that is v not t it contains only odd harmonic part 1 3 5 up to infinity 4 v d c divided by pi sin in omega t so that this is the Fourier expansion of the inverter output voltage now here we it is been asked that power delivered to load in bars only due to fundamental component of load current so what you will get rms value of fundamental output current 4 vdc divided by root 2 pi so 4 into 230 root 2 into pi So you get it at 207.073 volt. So the final power you can power delivered to load you can write V01 square divided by R 207.073 square divided by what is the value of resistance that is given as 2 ohm. So you will get the answer is 200 to 21439.6 volt so the answer for this question is 21493.6 volt sorry what it is it is asked of power Now let us see the next problem. The overhead transmission line is operating at 1.0 per unit. Reactance of transmission line is 0.2 per unit. Power transfer in per unit at an angle of 30 degree. So we know that for the active power we have v1 v2 divided by x sin delta we know this formula so by putting this 
all values in per unit we have v1 v2 is 1.0 into 1.0 and we have given x reactance of transmission line is 0.2 sin delta delta is given as the power angle is given as 30 degree so we will get 1 divided by 0 0.2 into sin 30 is 1 divided by 2 so we will get 1 divided by 0 0.4 so 10 divided by 4 we have 2.5 per unit now let us see the next problem so the critical clearance time of a fault in the microgrid is related to first option is active power limit b option is steady state stability limit c option is short circuit limit d option is transient stability limit so what do you think about this problem means transient stability relates to the equal power criterion so from there we will find the critical clearance time so the correct answer for this question will be t Now let us six solve this sixteen number problem. Determine a minimum circuit breaker trip rating and interrupting capacity for a hundred ten kVA single phase transformer with four percent impedance to be operated from a 380 volt 50 hertz source so you have to find the minimum circuit breaker trip rating so for this you need to find first normal full load current normal full load current so normal full load current will be name plate volt times name plate volt times that is apparent power rating volt amps divided it by line voltage name plate volt times given as 10 kVA 10,000 line voltage we have given as 380 volt so we will get 380 volt so we will get amp 26.316 six ampere as normal full load current now from that we can find maximum maximum short circuit amperes that is full load amps full load current full load current divided by the impedance we have given sing of single phase transformer so divide it by 4% so current we have normal full load current is 26.316 ampere divided by 4% 0.04 you will get the maximum short circuit amperes that is 657.9 ampere the breaker the breaker or fuse would have a minimum here we can say circuit breaker it's better 
एंड द ब्रेकर और फ्यूज उड़ाए हुए उड़ाए हुए मिनिमम उड़ाए हुए मिनिमम इंटरप्टिंग इंटरप्टिंग रेटिंग ऑफ सिक्स हंड्रेड फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट नाइन एम पी एर एट थ्री हंड्रेड एट्टी वोल्ट सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर द सिक्सटीन नंबर प्रॉब्लम इज सिक्स हंड्रेड फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट नाइन एम्पर एंड आवर हेयर ऑप्शन इज ऑलरेडी गिवेन सो द डी इज द करेक्ट ऑप्शन नाउ लेट अस सी द सेवनटीन प्रॉब्लम विच ओन इज एप्लीकेशन ऑफ डी सी एस स्मार्ट ग्रिड फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज रिनेबल एनर्जी पार्क बी ऑप्शन इज हाइब्रिड एनर्जी सिस्टम सी ऑप्शन इज इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल फास्ट चार्जिंग सिस्टम डी ऑप्शन इज ऑल ऑफ द एव so what we are having we are moving from a ac microgrid to a hybrid microgrid hybrid mixed microgrid that is having both ac and dc buses present and for dc dc microgrid there are many advantages like it has having higher efficiency it is having uh, it requirements of less power converters and uh, it, it is easily to integrate this uh, our renewable sources like pv fuel cells that are having output power as dc power so these are the some advantages of dc system and it also easily controllable so so basically for this dc microgrid these are the some of application mentioned here that first is high efficiency households and it is second is renewable energy parts and c is hybrid in and third is hybrid energy system and is electric vehicle fast charging station so from the options you can estimate that all are the applications of dc smart grid so the correct answer is d if you compare if you or if you want to write down the advantages and disadvantages of dc microgrid you can write like that it is having simple control because you need to control only the one variable that is voltage magnitude while in this uh, ac part you have there are voltage and angle both comes in the picture so it is more difficult to control it there so advantages are simple control high efficiency it requires less number of wires to transport the power and ac resistance is more than the dc resistance so the for the same amount of power to flow from the ac from the dc it it is having more power transfer capability so it is higher efficiency and high reliability good power quality it also requires less number of power converters requires less number of power converters for the dc loads to interface dg we can easily integrate the distributed energy sources like battery super capacitors and we can easily having electric vehicle fast charging station also so and some of the disadvantages of dc microgrid is 
like that's so one of the main disadvantage is that large amount of load converters which are characterized by this constant power loads large amount of load converters which are characterized which are characterized by the constant power loads which leads to instability of the bus voltage which are characterized by the constant power loads now let us see the some questions on voltage source converter which we need to formation of dc bus which we need to integrate the ac ac micro grid with the dc micro grid so the 18th number question is the outer controllers in voltage source converter vector control are responsible for generating first option reference reference voltage b option is reference currents c option is reference active and active power d option is none you can type your answer in the chat box For the voltage source control, the most co common control approaches are power angle control and this vector cu vector current control. So you can write some of the important points about this control of voltage source converter. common control approaches common control approaches for the voltage source converter are first is power angle control Second is vector current control. So power control power angle control is generally a straight forward means for controlling the active power the the, the you have to face there is some phase shift difference between the output of converter and this bus voltage so that the active power flows and the active power flow depends on the voltage magnitude difference so the, uh, on this concept that active power flow depends on the phase angle difference and active power flow depends on the voltage magnitude magnitude difference 
so on this concept this power angle control works on so this is quite a straightforward but for this vector and current control you need to convert this avc reference frame to syn to synchronous rotating uh, dq reference frame so this is inner current control so in power angle control you can't limit the current you cannot limit the current while in this vector current control you can limit the current can limit the current flowing into the converter flowing into the converter during disturbances so you can say that vector current control vector current control is a current control based approach so this is a current control based approach for this what you need to do you have need to convert this avc reference frame that voltage and magnitude at the bus at the ac bus needs to transform into the rotating synchronous dq frame and you get this and for the avc transformation you also need to do the need to track the frequency of the bus so for that you use you use phase lock loop mechanism <laughs> and further what in this controller you have this outer voltage control loop the outer voltage loop control loop outer voltage control gives the reference current to current reference current to the inner current control loop and the inner current to further gives reference voltage to the to the inverter and that we needs to convert it again avc reference frame and it generates pwm signal and given to the gate driver of voltage source converter and that switching gen uh, and the switching happens to the switch of voltage source converter that is the mechanism in the vector current control so you can write one or two points here the outer voltage control loop in vector current control the outer an outer voltage loop is slower then the inner current control loop it is having less bandwidth the outer voltage controller the outer voltage control is responsible outer voltage controller is responsible for generating for generating the reference currents reference currents for the inner current controller for the inner current controller further the inner
करेंट कंट्रोलर डिटरमाइंस द वोल्टेज रिफरेंस डिटरमाइंस द वोल्टेज रिफरेंस रिफरेंस ऑफ द कन्वर्टर इन डीक्यू फ्रेम और एंड इट इज ओली कंप्राइजेज फास्ट पी आई कंट्रोलर्स फास्ट परपोशन एंड इज ओली कंप्राइज ऑफ एंड इज ओली कंप्राइज फास्ट प्रपोशनल इंटीग्रल कंट्रोलर फास्ट पी आई कंट्रोलर मीन्स इट्स वुड हैविंग हाई बैंड विथ बैंड विथ शुड बी हाई सो द एटीन नंबर क्वेश्चन इट वॉज आस्किंग अबाउट द आउटर वोल्टेज कंट्रोल लूप आउटर वोल्टेज आउटर कंट्रोलर्स इन वोल्टेज सोर्स कंप्यूटर वेक्टर कंट्रोल आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर जनरेटिंग द रिफरेंस करेंट सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन विल बी बी and this inner current controllers is asking in this question number 19 so the inner current controllers in voltage source converter vector control are responsible for generating the reference voltage for the voltage source converter so here you can also write that reference current is generated for the inner current current inner current controllers and it is generating the reference voltage for the converter and that needs to be converted to avc domain and using dq to inverse dq to avc transformation and then it is given to the pwm generator that give fi that gives final switching pulse to the switches of the voltage source converter now let us see the last problem for this live uh, for this tutorial session and we will end this session so question number 20 is asking about that networks that are supplied by voltage below 1 kvr what you think low voltage networks high voltage networks or medium voltage networks different standards follow different voltage level but generally below 1 kv be considered as it as low voltage networks so the correct answer will be a and this is high voltage networks and this is medium voltage networks and so and for medium voltage networks it should be greater than 1 generally it is not a for different standards they are follow different protocols for but for medium voltage networks generally it is like 10 kv 12 kv 6 kv some in seven some standards it also 6 kv 8 kv not uh, greater than 1 kv and lower than 8 kv 6 kv or 10 kv that is considered mb converter and more than that it is concerned considered as high voltage networks so that's that's all for this uh, live for this session and and practice well so that you can perform well in the final exam and go through these all questions we have solved in this tutorial session and go through these assignments and all the best for this upcoming exam i think we have only one session is left 
get the live tutorial session so so if you having any doubt you can uh, you can write in doubt in this discussion forum also and you can ask in the next live tutorial session okay, okay bye thank you all